Nice. I can't keep the burpees down today. Uh, anyway, hey, hi, hello, I'm Annex Cat, and uh, I'm gonna be talking over a time lapse that I did for the Monkey King from Monkey Kid, or also known as Sun Wukong, and Macaque, as well as uh, his shadow form and um, Bone Lady, Lady Bone version of uh, Monkey King. <laughs> Words. Anyway. Um, I'm using Clip Studio Paint, and I'm using mostly vector layers just because they're really easy to manipulate. And you'll see here there's a lot of strobing going on with each line, which shows you that even though I'm using vector lines, I'm still redrawing the line about a thousand times each. Boy, I have to talk through ten minutes of this? How do you artists do this? Uh, this idea actually kind of stemmed from itself. It was just a little sketch and I kind of liked the position enough to render it out. Um, I, I wanted to do like a bookmark sort of thing in the beginning, but then like the position was not the right dimension. So I ended up just doing a design for uh, stickers and acrylic keychain. I don't have them uh, right now, but hopefully one day they'll be in my shop. So after I have the sketch kind of figured out, the layout, I kind of get my resources from screenshots from the show, different uh, lighting elements, and then like taking all of those and you can see in the palette I have in the corner, that's Sun Wukong's color palette. The face probably took me the longest, I would say, because it just, it doesn't, it didn't feel right. So I did that for a long time and you'll see me go back over it again because honestly the face is one of the most important parts about any character, in my opinion at least. I also don't have very much experience drawing uh, these characters. I love the show, I've finished the show, and I have sketches of him, but it's like in my own art style, which is fine, but I really wanted to kind of capture that Lego Flying Bark Studios sort of style, because it's just so, it's so fun and loose, but dynamic as well. So this is kind of a study about their style as well. I think drawing the hair and the fur was one of my very favorite parts. Just like making it all fluffy and cute. Like I just want to like fluff it up. It looks so soft. The way I do line art kind of depends. Usually it'll be the sketch and then I'll do like a, a more refined sketch and then I'll finally do the line art because it usually changes a couple of times like you've seen with the ribbons and um, the cape and stuff, and even the tail positions. I'll do it a couple of times, a couple of passes. The vector lines definitely help because I don't have to redraw it every single time I want to move it, like, like a centimeter over. I'm not sure if a lot of artists do this, I'm just really picky with my own art. The Lego shoes were so hard, which you wouldn't think that they would be because they're just three-dimensional boxes with like a little step jutting out but man those were harder than I thought they would be. All right from here I'm gonna talk a little bit less and let you just kind of enjoy the art. I had to go back and forth on the staff size because it changes so much in the show. Like canonically, it can just grow and shrink to like whatever size. So figuring out the proper size for it in uh, this piece was oddly hard to ratio to the character. All right, so here I've gotten through enough of uh, Sun Wukong to go over and do Macaque. So you can see that like, I'm starting to do his armor and stuff. And now um, I'm going back through and doing a couple more passes on the face just because I wasn't too happy with it. 
At this point, I believe I had taken a couple days break. I do that with pretty much all of my art pieces. I'll never finish it in one sitting just because you don't always get certain things that are wrong with it, either anatomically or color wise or composition wise without taking a breather to kind of reset your mind. And now I'm going to finish his staff. I did a couple different passes with more stylized round uh, round spikes. It was It's more spiky in the show, so I ended up just sticking with that. I think one of the downsides to doing Clip Studio Paint is that it doesn't capture the whole window it just captures your canvas so you can't see like what layers I'm working on or you know how many layers I have and stuff like that but I think for each character I had about so for the line art I had maybe 10 to 15 layers and then like after I completed that I would merge it all into one and then the color it would be maybe another 8 to 12 layers and then the shading will be like another four or five layers. Then after I've blocked in the line art for Macaque, then I finish off the staffs on both of them and I'll start blocking in the colors. I bring in another reference sheet just because I couldn't quite remember where all of the colors go on the outfits. Yeah, so now I'm going in through shading. Um, I think I think I'm putting this on a multiplier layer. I don't think it's on there yet, just so I can see the the shade a little bit better. But it's just it's just like a purplish shade. It's not the exact same one that they use in the show, but I personally liked this shade better. It just brings a little bit more interest into the uh, the piece. Now you can see on Macaque I'm starting to do like a, a secondary light or even like a rim light because again just brings a little bit more interest and three-dimensional properties to the character. I like to use car or colors that really stick out that way I can really pay attention to where they are on the piece and then once I'm happy with where everything is then I change the color or the properties. I have to really kind of hold myself back from rendering too much in the characters because I love rendering. It's it's one of my favorite parts about doing art, but it's such like a cartoonish, simplistic style because that's what you have to do with animation. Um, but I really had to control myself. Also, if you're wondering what the green dots are that you see going along the line, that's a smoothing tool or a simplifying tool, or it could be even um, moving that vector line a little bit. So here I decided maybe I'd want to do a double-sided either bookmark or keychain. I do Shadow Macaque for Macaque, obviously, and I kind of struggled with what I wanted Sun Wukong to be. Doing the like glowy bits on his eyes and on um, Macaque's shadow self was probably my second favorite part, if not the first. It, it's a hard, it's a hard call. Finding the like proper references for 
Lady Bone Demon. Um, Sun Wukong was strangely hard. I had to literally go in and take screenshots from the episode itself. Originally, I didn't think to do the Lady Bone Demon version of him. I think I was originally going to do like a uh, his like full armor version of him or like Peak Sung Wukong version. Yeah, and there's the finished pieces. Whoa! How'd you learn to do that? If you want to see the pieces by themselves, I posted them all to Instagram, which I've linked in the description. Um, there's also a link on my channel. And uh, I'm going to try and do a couple more of these just to kind of get used to it. And personal gain, because I have the memory of a goldfish. And, you know, two years from now, I might want to know kind of my thought process for some of these pieces. I hope you enjoyed it and um, check out some of my other videos or some more of my art on Instagram. Thank you all for watching. Bye.